Hello, with the objective on the screen uh, 1.6, we're going to talk about select the appropriate cabling type based on implementation requirements. What we want to be able to do is select the correct cable type in order to connect our devices together. Uh, we're going to look at types of cable, we're going to look at choosing the correct cable, and then we'll uh, look at the Ethernet frame for a few minutes. This is, it gets kind of shoehorned in in this objective. Examples of networks here, uh, we've talked about these, looked at some of these uh, when we've had, when we, when we, in, in the previous slides, but on this one we have different floors, well, first floor, second floor, sec, uh, first, second, third floor. What kind of cabling do we use here? Q, yeah, pick, secure, pick the correct cable, and up here we're showing the computers wired and then the wireless connected to the wireless access point, but at some point it has to be wired to our network. So wireless or not, eventually we're going to have to have a piece of wire. And then down here to the rest of the network. This one, we're connecting together various devices, and in order to do that, we need to, to select the correct cable. Uh, computer here, a wired computer, an access point, uh, a printer, and then we'll connect to a router to the Ethernet or the fast Ethernet, fast Ethernet uh, connection on a router itself. So we have what we would call an Ethernet network in here even though we're really using fast Ethernet. The types of Ethernet that we have, the true Ethernet is a 10 megabit per second connection. Uh, informal IEEE name 10 base T, and we're going to look at what all these numbers mean in the uh, in the next slide. Uh, the IEEE for, formal standard name 802.3, so Ethernet 802.3 standard, and over here a copper in 100 meters. If you've asked, if you're asked a question, how far or how long can a, an Ethernet segment be, unless you know anything different or unless you know something different, if it's copper, uh, guess 100 meters. And what I always try to do with these things that have lists is to uh, learn the exceptions. Whatever the standard is, say, okay, everything's 100 meters except, and then we'll go look at what the exceptions are to that. And you notice that fiber down there in the gigabit, 1,000 megabits per second, gigabit Ethernet, 1,000 base LX, it looks a little different than the other stuff did there. there they've got a 10 base, a 100 base, a 1,000 base, and a 10 gig G base, or 10 gig base T, and the T means twisted pair. We're going to look at what those look like here in a second. The LX tells us it's going to be fiber. Uh, it has a different uh, name, but each of them is different, obviously. 802.3U, .3AB, .3AN, depending on the speed. Uh, but the fiber comes up with a Z, and it's uh, substantially longer uh, than the uh, 100 meters, 5,000 meters, 5 kilometers, which will be about 3 miles uh, for those. So the different Ethernet types, what they are, the standard number, how far will they go. When we look at, read the Ethernet symbology, 100 base, 100 base TX, the 100 is the bandwidth. 100 means 100 megabits per second. Megabits per second. Base means it's baseband, the signal type. So it, it means it's a, it's a single frequency. Baseband versus broadband. Broadband cable TV, uh, for instance. The TX is the media type, the transmission. The TX here is going to be a twisted pair. So the IEEE standard Ethernet 802.3, this is kind of a, of a, of a re, rehashing of the previous slide. The access method we look in here, we have CSMA CD, which we talked about in a previous uh, module. So CSMA CD here, topology, bus, star, and then when we get into fast Ethernet, we're into star. And then we're into star for everything else. Uh, gigabit Ethernet, bandwidth is a gig, 
CSMA CD and half duplex, central switch in duplex. And when we get into uh, full duplex and we don't have collisions, uh, we still worry about the 100 meters, but we, we're not into uh, collision detection anymore. And this is CSMA CD in half duplex, which means that we can have collisions because you remember half duplex was the one that my kind of dumb uh, illustration is a one lane bridge. We had duplexing and then we had a restriction here. Sort of we can transmit, we can receive, but we can only do one at a time with these things. Uh, the transmission media, Ethernet can be coax or twisted pair and then when we get fast Ethernet twisted pair, twisted pair and fiber and then 10 gig fiber although I think that we're in copper uh, 10 gig now we're getting to uh, to be able to the point that we can use copper there and what causes that is the number of twists we're going to look at again we're going to look at uh, Alice is going I think it's on the next slide what a twisted pair looks like when we talk about twisted pair shielded twisted pair unshielded twisted pair uh, when we look at shielded twisted pair we have a shield around it so we've got a foil shield here this one, the unshielded, the UTP does not have that, but the pairs, and when we talk about pairs, we have two wires in each of these. We have four pair, eight wires, eight wires in these things. So twisted pair, the pairs are twisted, and then the pairs are twisted within the foil. The reason that we do that, if we had parallel wires here, and we had noise, electromagnetic interference, one will magnetically induce noise in the other one and they will they all amplify each other if we twist these things and we have these signals that are like this up and down and then if we go this way they're going to cancel each other out so that we get rid of the noise it doesn't totally cancel it out but it does reduce the noise so that's why we twist them shielding keeps the uh, the noise level the electromagnetic interference helps with EMF electromagnetic interference as does the twisting. We have a foil shielded twisted pair over here which has got more shielding. Each of the pairs here we got the pair shield so each pair has a shield and then we have a shield around the outer jacket we have an overall foil shield so we have a shield around the pairs and then each pair has a shield so we get a lot more and this is the reason that we can go faster and faster and faster other things that happen uh, uh, multiplexing and those those sorts of things are different ones that allow that and then these are going to be uh, copper conductors uh, in the devices in the uh, in the wire itself so uh, straight flow cable uh, we have a transmit pair and a receive pair one twisted pair we have the transmitter goes to the receiver and the receiver and the transmitter if we have like to like and we're going to have a, a, a couple a, a, a couple of images or, or a, a one that illustrates what kind we have but a like to like would be like a nick to a nick if we went nick to nick the transmit would go to the transmitter the receiver would go to the receiver so straight through cable when we have a switch or a hub the switch or the hub internally switches the transmitter to the receiver for that so that we get data flow and then the, the uh, transmit side will then go to the receive side of the device the PC and the switch here so that we do have data flow if we had if we went to a PC to a PC transmitter to transmitter and receiver to receiver we wouldn't have a whole lot of data transfer we'd just be trans transmitting into it and, and when we do that we're going to use this is a straight through we're going to use what's called a crossover cable where we cross the pair and each of these is a pair one and two three and six we're going to cross one and three, two and six. So when we go like to like, like to like crossover, uh, we send transmitter to receiver just like we do here 
in the uh, in the switch itself. The switch does it for us. We call that unlike, and and what what we're going to say that is in like to like devices, nick to nick, computer to computer, computer to uh, Ethernet uh, connect on on a, on a router. Uh, Router to router, Ethernet to Ethernet, like to like, we're going to need a crossover cable. Switch to switch, connect two switches together, we're going to need a crossover cable. Switch to a hub, we're going to need a crossover cable. Unlike devices, a NIC to a switch or a NIC to a hub, straight through cable is what we're going to need. And we're going to look at what these things look at in right now. So, and this is the rule here, unlike a straight through computer to a switch or a hub, a router nick to a switch or a hub, like to like is a crossed cable. Nick to nick, switch to switch, hub to hub, hub to switch, uh, computer to router ethernet interface. Each of those is going to need a crossed cable. Uh, we say that we cross pairs one and three, two and six, and these are the, the uh, standards that we talked about, 568A, 568B. If you want to make a cross over cable make one end with the A connector and the other end with the B connector and you'll have it or one and three two and six get crossed so here one and three one and three get crossed one and three get crossed two and six get crossed two and six get crossed so that the transmit pair goes to the receive pair we can actually send data that way in the neck that this thing connects to and I don't think I said this earlier is a transceiver a transmitter receiver trans -E -I -V -E -R, transceiver transmitter receiver which sends the signal out and receives the signal from one to the other so uh, straight through cable crossover cable uh, different uses of them pick the right one are we going uh, from a like to a like or from unlike devices the other one other cable type twisted pair cable type that we will use fairly regularly is a rollover cable connecting the console terminal or modem consider the following points the console aux ports on the router are used for system management Aux ports uh, provide administrative access, uh, provides the following cables connecting to them. And what this is all saying is that we're going to connect to the uh, console port. We're going to, on the back of the router, we're going to have an RJ45 connector, which is the console port, which is where we're going to connect our computer to, our RS-232 connection, serial connection. Uh, we're, go, we're going to we're going to go in into here so that we can manage the uh, uh, router or the switch. But routers and switches don't come with keyboards and uh, consoles and, and keyboard keyboards and monitors. You have we have to manage them through a uh, through a computer or or a you know, computer or, or other management device. I guess that we can get there. What we're going to get is one console cable RJ45 to DB9. This thing down here uh, called an called a, a a dongle, and we're going to get one of these guys, which goes to a parallel port, and then we're going to have an actual. And this is going to be this is the color it's going to be. Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, DB9, I knew that, DB9 to RJ45 connection, which is going to go from our computer uh, to uh, our console port. So we need to be able to do that. One of the problems with today's computers, if you bought one lately, is they don't have serial ports anymore. So what we will wind up doing in a lot of cases is, is we need to uh, go uh, from some other uh, port uh, to a uh, DB9 to a serial uh, to the console cable here. Uh, USB 
typically so USB to serial and then the serial serial to uh, RJ45 kind of a, a, a long line to get there but you may have to do to do that so rollover cable connects to the console port on your device router or switch to enable you to uh, manage it from the command line this is a chart of straight through and crossover cables I was reading a, a board one time somebody said I had a bunch of questions about what kind of cable to choose and it wasn't covered in any of the study materials so what is it and this is one that comes out a straight through cable we have up here uh, Ethernet port on a, a router to a switch computer to a switch a server to a switch uh, we got another one a computer there to a switch uh, to hubs we go to hubs down here at the bottom and then if we had a uh, a printer that had an RJ45 connector on it it would be in there also the crossover cable the like to like we got switch to switch switch to hub hub to hub router ethernet to router ethernet uh, ethernet to uh, computer NIC uh, computer NIC to computer NIC all of those are going to uh, be using uh, crossover cables where we cross a uh, pair one or yeah, wires one and three two and six to send the uh, transmit to the receive a little bit here on the uh, ethernet frame in the ethernet frame kind of layer two so we're at the data link layer data link layer two and we talked about framing we're going to have a preamble on these things a start of frame uh, uh, the preamble is going to be a bunch of ones and zeros to get it synchronized and then a start of frame signal the destination address the 48-bit MAC address 48-bit MAC destination and source address the length the 802.2 header and data and data goes in here and then FCS frame check sequence to be sure that the frame didn't get corrupted in route and when we look at this thing how big is it seven bits plus one uh, six seven seven bytes one byte six bytes 48 bits uh, six bytes here the length is going to be a two byte fill and they have 46 to 1500 bytes here in the uh, 802.2 header and frame 802.2 is, uh, is the logical link control and the data so when we look at this 1500 bytes is typically going to be considered what we have with a header the preamble synchronization start of frame delimiter signals that the next byte begins the destination MAC the destination MAC the intended recipient the uh, source MAC uh, the sender the type defines the type of protocol listed inside the frame most likely IPv4 or IPv6 and then the uh, the data and padding holds the data uh, from the higher level typically a uh, layer 3 PDU layer 3 protocol data unit don't some people fight back for the uh, PDU mnemonic uh, data don't uh, transport segment uh, network packets data link frames and then the uh, physical layer is bits uh, to meet these uh, we have a minimum of 46 bytes if we go below that we're going to have a runt uh, frame check sequence uh, method for receiving uh, the NIC to determine if the frame experience transmission or is did it get corrupted in route so we have the uh, frame check sequence uh, to do that the, the uh, this is just another uh, another look at this thing. Uh, eight, oh, t we we have a couple of different types here. We can have a link, the Ethernet, the true Ethernet. If we if we were Ethernet, the difference is whether the field is length or type, the type of Ethernet frame or the length of the Ethernet frame. Uh, preamble here, but it doesn't have the start of frame starter frame delimiter and then FCS over here the frame check sequence they're very similar uh, when we look at them minor minor differences uh, 
uh, between them. The MAC address structure, we've talked about that a little bit. The, the key here, OUI, the organizational unique identifier, and then vendor assigned, or I like to think of it as a serial number. Each of, the, each of these elements over here, the second half, the second 24 bits, uh, is going to be unique. These are going to represent the manufacturer. So you, you can look them up on the internet if, if, you, uh, if you want to. And here Cisco 00602F is going to be Cisco. If anything that starts with that sequence is going to be manufactured by Cisco. And then the particular device, the individual device serial uh, is going to be the second half of the address. Ethernet connections, di just different things that you may see. We have a bunch of RJ45s, AUI, uh, auxiliary unit interface. The old routers didn't come with uh, serial connectors or, uh, or uh, well, they didn't come with coax connectors or RJ45 connectors for the uh, Ethernet port. So an AUI here, this one's RJ45. We could have a different AUI. This one over here has got coax. So it allowed us to put whichever adapter module into the router uh, that we required uh, for the type of cabling that we had in our network. Today, everything's going to come with uh, serials and RJ45s for uh, Ethernet, fast Ethernet connectors because uh, we really don't use coax anymore. 10 base 2, uh, RJ45, most, mostly what we're going to see, hopefully what all of what you're going to see is uh, RJ45 connectors. Fiber, just a quick look at the components of a fiber cable. Ultra thin, thin strands, and these really are glass. They're flexible glass. Uh, light can pass. Variety of much longer distances than 100 meters supported by Ethernet and uh, an unshielded twisted pair because there's no EMI. If you were going to uh, wire a uh, power generation plant where there's a lot of EMI, you're going to need, co you're going to need uh, fiber because it is immune to EMI. Uh, high noise areas is where we're going to need this. Uh, much less interference from outside sources when compared to copper. Two types, multi-mode, shorter distances, generally going to be cheaper, works with LEDs, and this is probably what we're going to have on most of our NICs. Single-mode fiber, uh, long distances, more expensive, and it's going to use laser hardware. The signals do have to be repeated, but Remember that we degrade the signal as we go along. We can degrade the signal a lot farther, a lot farther to a lot smaller with fiber because we don't have to worry about EMI. There is none. There is no magnetic interference from the atmosphere, from all the things that we use, motors, uh, fluorescent lights. Fluorescent lights are real killer on, carp on copper. The other kind of cabling that we might have is WAN cabling, wide area uh, network cabling. Uh, the, these are some numbers in here. I think what, what they're pr primarily uh, concerned with in this part of the course is uh, Ethernet, but uh, various types of serial connectors with a proper physical connector uh, for the WANs. Uh, which is the correct cable to use in the WAN service and we're going to talk about DTE and DCE. DTE is data terminal equipment and what this means and this is for data terminal equipment and data communications equipment. Three M's huh? Data communications equipment. What a data communications equipment is is simply a router that has a clock rate on it. So when we configure a DCE, we have to have a clock rate. And I always thought it was that the, that the communications, the C was convenient there for clock. It doesn't affect the speed or anything. It's just a timing signal. And the timing signal gets sent to the other end, to the uh, DTE, the data terminal equipment. 
DTE. So, and these are the different connector types: V.35, X.21. I'm, I'm not sure that you would have to know these. It's kind of kind of nice to be a little familiar with them. But uh, V.35, 34 pin synchronous is uh, 1.544 X.21. Those things. I have a a, a kind of an illustrative illustrative one here in just in a second. The DSU CSU data service unit channel service unit provide the clock signal to the router because the DSU CSU is able to get its timing from a stable source, uh, the network service provider. The CSU DSU is the it's going to be an RJ45. It's a module that goes into a a, a router where we would connect to our ISP with it and that's where it talks about getting a stable time source. Typically unless you have serial connections on your routers within your network probably not going to do that. Routers are probably going to be connected together with Ethernet inside because it's going to be easier to do. It's probably going to be a little bit faster. Uh, typically the ISP is going to provide the clock so we're going to be the DTE in almost all cases unless we have serial connections within our network. But D, when you're doing labs, the DTE must have a clock rate. WAN connections here, uh, the end user device, the DTE, different connectors, and those are all serial type connectors. Uh, the, the center here, the, the middle here, is typically going to wind up being uh, the same so that we can can connect one uh, connector a newer router to an older router as we change interfaces so the CSU DSU typically going to be the uh, service provider the DTE is going to be us so we don't have to worry about the clock rate it gets sent to us uh, by the uh, service provider so with that we've had a look at the uh, cable types uh, what we're going to use, we, we talked about different Ethernet networks, Ethernet cables, the types of Ethernet cables that we need to connect devices together, like-to-like -like and unlike devices, computer-to-computer, computer-to-router, uh, computer, uh, 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 Ethernet, uh, or like-to-like, switch-to-switch, hub-to-hub, switch-to-hub, all those like-to-like -like are going to require crossover cable. Unlike if we go from our router Ethernet to a switch, it's going to be a straight through. Our computer to a switch or hub, it's going to be a straight through cable. We looked at the Ethernet header, talked a little bit about the MAC address, the OUI, and the, uh, and the serial or the uniquely assigned portion of it. Half of it is the OUI, the uh, organizational unique identifier or unit identifier uh, is, the, is the first uh, 24 bits, the second 24 bits and the 48 bit address is going to be the unique serial number assigned by the manufacturer. We looked at a fiber cable makeup uh, uh, briefly and then we talked briefly about WAN wide area network uh, uh, connectors. Uh, DTE and DCE, the significance of those, DCE, C for clock. Uh, so with that we're going to stop here and uh, go on to the uh, next objective will be apply troubleshooting methodologies to resolve problems. So hope to see you there. Thank you for your attention.